Welcome to the first section on developer accounts. Now, whether you're starting out as an app developer or you're a seasoned developer with an account already, maybe you have a personal account, I think you'll find this, uh, this section helpful if you're interested in either starting with a organizational account or switching over from a personal account to organizational account. So let's take a look at what this is. This is the developer portal, and this is where you can sign up uh, with an account and you do need an account to put apps into the, the App Store. Now let's take a look at what kind of apps you can make. As you can see here at the top, you can create for Mac OS, you can create for iOS, which is iPhone and iPad, you can create for Watch OS and TV OS. Now let's take an actual look at the program. Now from code to customer, and the great thing about this is you can distribute your apps worldwide. I myself currently have at least uh, three apps in 174 of the 175 countries that Apple has an app store. And that's an amazing opportunity to reach millions and millions of potential users. Now, some of the things you get with this, you can get the latest betas. So every time a beta comes out, you know, for instance, this past summer when iOS 10 was in beta, you know, I could have downloaded that, put it on my iPhone. Uh, you can get the, the latest releases of Xcode, which Xcode, if you look down here, this is Xcode right here. This is your IDE, your, uh, your development environment as far as developing the apps. Um, you'll be able to test your apps in test flight. And what that is, you upload a build to iTunes Connect, and we'll, we'll get into iTunes Connect a little bit later. But you, you, upload, you upload your build, and you can have as many as external testers as you really, really want or need. Um, so, how does it work? Let's scroll down here. As I think uh, the, the most important thing is really how to enroll. Now, as I stated in the beginning, uh, you can enroll as an individual, and that's completely fine if that's what you want to do, uh, or you can enroll as an organization. Now, from my experience, uh, you're better off enrolling as an organization because I started out as enrolling as an individual, thought, okay, I just I already had my iTunes account and ID set up, and it was real simple. I just roll in, go in there and do it under my name. And then as I got into it, I started to realize, well, there's, there's some liability issues here that I really need to consider. And do, do I want to put the apps in the App Store under my name or do I want to do it as, as an organization? And there's a lot of benefits to doing it as an organization later on as, as you grow. Um, and certainly some things that can limit your liability. So you probably wonder, okay, what kind of liability is there for putting, putting apps in the App Store? Well, let's face it you are creating software that's going to go on someone's phone and in some cases you may be creating software that tracks their data accesses their personal information communicates that over the internet and is storing it on a server so if you're doing those things then i really encourage you to enroll as an organization because you want to limit your liability as much as possible now we know that anything can be, is hackable these days. Uh, we have terrorist activity that happens. There's a whole host of things that, that can go wrong. People's data being stolen. Um, you know, so there's a lot of things you need to consider. Now, if you're making apps that are standalone apps on the device only, don't communicate with the internet. Um, and I have two of those. And I don't actually have privacy policies that, that go along with those because there was no need. But if you're only going to make those types of apps, then enrolling as an individual is fine. I, I think you'll be perfectly okay. And you can probably skip ahead to a couple of sections after this. But if you've enrolled as an individual, or you're thinking about enrolling and putting apps in the App Store, and you're going to create apps that use third-party software or using uh, frameworks like CloudKit, Firebase, Parse, then you really need to enroll as an organization. And there are a couple of steps there. So let's take a look at those. 
Well, the first thing is you got to be an organization. So you're going to need to form an organization and get a DUNS number. Now, as a DUNS number, this is done through Dun and Bradstreet. And they're business, basically business identifiers. So once you've formed your organization, your business, then you go to Dun and Bradstreet and say, hey, I have a legal business. I need a DUNS number. Now, this is how other businesses know, know about you, can verify that you are a legal business and that you're just not some shell company company or a fictitious company in, in, in some cases. Um, now, Apple will not do business with you, enter any contracts with you if you're not a legal entity. So your organization must be a legal entity so they can enter into contracts with Apple. They, they clearly states here. We do not accept DBAs, fictitious businesses, trade names, or branches. Okay? So, you can't be a subsidiary or a branch of, of another organization. It has to be done with your actual company's name. Okay? And you have to be a legal bonding authority. You have to be a person within the organization who can make legal decisions for the organization. So it means you must be the owner or founder, an executive team member, a senior project lead, or have legal authority granted to you by a senior employee. So how do we how do we get the ball rolling here to go forward with getting in, getting in as an organization? Well, you don't want to sign up yet. Okay? If you haven't signed up already, just hold off on that for a second. Join me in the next section where we're going to talk about forming your own LLC, because that's what you want to do first. We'll form an LLC, then we'll get our DUNS number, and then we'll sign up for the program. See you there.